Welcome back to On the Tee on this steamy June 8th, 2011. Two pros and a hack in the studio tonight. I'm Mike Rickard alongside Judd Gibb and Jay Horton. And of course, we're on the Iowa Sports Connection radio network on ESPN 1700, The Champ, our flagship, and KCRG 9.2 as well as Mediacom Channels 109 in Cedar Rapids and WHO 13.2 and Mediacom Channel 113 here in Central Iowa. We're brought to you by 3E Electrical Engineering and Equipment Company, eight locations in Iowa to serve you from Sioux City to the Quad Cities. Log on to 3eco.com for a location in Iowa near you. In our Okaboji Grill Studios with great locations here in Central Iowa and Eastern Iowa. They're located in Johnston, Ankeny, the south side here in Des Moines, Pleasant Hill, Ames, Iowa City, Newton Independence, and North Liberty. It's the place where good friends meet. Speaking of meeting, we're going to get caught up with uh, your former roommate, Mark Hankins, the head coach, University of Iowa. What an incredible season they had. Well, uh, what, maybe you should say what an incredible few seasons they've had. Uh, I don't think this surprised anybody, the uh, the run that they went on. We talked before the Big Ten Championship happened that uh, we didn't want to put any more pressure on them, but we thought that the Hawks had a heck of a chance to win the Big Ten Championship. And, and certainly, uh, even though you know maybe nationally would have thought been thought of as a dark horse, but with the lineup that they had taking to the uh, national championships last week, Funnier things have happened, but uh, I, I love the fact of having your five-man be Jed Dirksen, who's made it to the quarterfinals of the U.S. Amateur. That, that's not too bad of a lineup to have if you were to get to that match play. Well, definitely. Like I said, he's he's a fantastic player. And then uh, along, you know, uh, Chris Brandt, who we talked about in the fall, was kind of a key for his success in the fall. He really started to uh, kind of pick it up again in the spring. And, uh, you know, his performance at the Big Ten Championships and – and uh, as well at the regionals and NCAs, um, you know, he really was a stalwart to almost push him into that match play situation. So they played fantastic. It's fun to see. Well, of course, uh, the remodel of Finkbein was that two years ago, I believe, when they did that, uh, boys? I don't know if it was two years, but, it, you know, it's, it's recent. They've been upgrading all the facilities there, and it's just a, it's a great place to Well, the to man can give us the answer right now as he's kind enough to join us on the team. Mark Hankins joins us. When not they redo the course over there, Coach? Yeah, it's been about six years ago now, guys. Jeez, Time flies. <laughs> well, especially at my age, I'm on the Champions Tour, so it seems just like yesterday that uh, they redid it. But uh, congratula yeah, congratulations on an incredible season and uh, a nice finish at the NCAAs. Yeah, thanks, guys. Glad to be here. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a special uh, golf tournament. Many people out there know Oklahoma State is uh, kind of one of the perennial powerhouses. And when you walk in that clubhouse and see about – 50 Big 8, Big 12 championships, and uh, just just hundreds of trophies. It was pretty impressive. Well, Mark, I know, you know, th those that follow go college golf obviously know, but, uh, you know, being able to finish 10th uh, in the country there at the NCAA championships, missed out on the match play only by three shots. Um, you know, it had to be a thrill for those guys to, uh, you know, not only just go there, but go there with a legitimate chance to win. I mean, we always thought that if you could sneak that team into match play, your lineup top to bottom, they were a bunch of gritty guys, they might have a chance to knock somebody off. And obviously watching Augusta State do it to Oklahoma State in their home course proved it could be done. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you guys just had a fantastic year. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Jay. You know, it was uh, – we kind of lost the turn. It's interesting, you know, you, you figure you got a veteran team, we got three juniors and two seniors going, and – if you guys would have been there, you would have noticed the larger-than-life digital scoreboard, like a PGA Tour board, literally 10 feet off the back of the 18th hole. We started on 10 the first day really late, turned through 9, and looked up on the board. It said Georgia Tech minus 3, Alabama minus 2, Iowa minus 1. And I think at that point we went, uh, uh, what? <laughs> um, turned onto the back, played about 16 over par on the back, counted two eights. And uh, from then on, played great, you know. So just kind of a little bit of a glitch there. Um, caught themselves looking at the leaderboard uh, too early in the in the in the tournament. And uh, besides that, you know, played great the last couple of days and in bad conditions. Not bad, just tough. Well, and uh, really had a chance down the stretch with a couple of birdies were in there. Well, Mark, it's interesting you say tough conditions because you know we look at the scores uh, from the. the the, the NCAA championship this year and for somebody that doesn't know anything about Karsten Creek they might think well that must have been terrible weather that's the reason the scores were so high but but why, why don't you share with everybody what kind of a facility that they have there mm -hmm. at Karsten Creek and how mm -hmm. how tough it is right well first off uh, you know I compared I called it at the beginning of the week this is the 
U.S. Open of college golf right here. The rough, Lazoja rough, and Lazoja grows straight up, as many people know. It's like in the middle section of the United States. And when you make it into rough, when your ball goes in there, it doesn't lay on top of anything. It goes down to the ground, and the rough comes up around it. So guys were literally hitting wedges and nine irons if they hit it in the rough, chunking it out onto the fairway, trying to hit up on the greens. Now, the greens were very fair. They weren't super fast, but some of the pins were tucked. I mean, that's just kind of the tradition of the U.S. or the, um, you know, the NCAA. It's going to be a challenging golf course. The second thing about this golf course was it played about 74-50. It was super long. The wind wasn't a factor. The heat wasn't really a factor. It was just hard out there. I mean, there was an, a six, seven, eight at every corner, and if you hit it in the woods, um, I don't know that you're getting out of there in any less than double bogey, and we saw a ton of them last week, and our guys did a nice job uh, down the stretch the last two rounds of kind of staying away from that huge number, and that's why we were able to make up so much ground and, and almost get into that match play. You're listening on the T on the Iowa Sports Connection Radio and Television Network. We're talking to Mark Hankins, the head coach of the University of Iowa Hawkeyes. And coach, for our audience out there that's not familiar with the NCAA format, uh, let us know how many teams made it down there and, and, and uh, of course, uh, how many teams then advanced into match play. Right. Well, it starts out, obviously, there's 300 Division One teams in, in golf. And um, as a golf coach, I know Jay and, and Judd just, we understand when you say top 25 in the NCAA or top 30, you're talking about the the very elite because there is 300 Division One schools. You know, whereas you compare it to a football where there's 109, or you know, a wrestling where there's 80, or something like that. I mean, there's a ton of good schools out there. So when you make it to the finals, there's 30 teams. We play three rounds of medal play, so like a normal tournament, three rounds. At that point, the top eight teams go into match play and at that point then you really realize that you do have a chance to win the national championship and um you know it would have been it was kind of a dream of mine at the beginning of that week i, I kind of wanted to go against oklahoma state you want to talk about a cinderella story and, and such a great team that they have this year um you know it would have been a lot of fun and then turns out uh for the third straight year um you know they probably come in with the best team and don't win with the championship so i don't know <laughs> how much Coach Holder there, the former uh, coach and athletic director at Oklahoma State, how he feels about the match play anymore. But it sure brings excitement, and um, the kids love it. And uh, it was just a great experience for our guys. Well, you talk about, you know, uh, just teams and stuff making the elite teams. uh, Not only yourself and the job you've done in Iowa, but the entire Big Ten is really starting to get strong. When you, you know, it's normally kind of been a southern sport where a lot of kids have been down there, and not only to have... I think four teams from the Big Ten finishing in the top ten. You and Michigan both tied for tenth, but but they have Illinois and Ohio State making it into match play. Uh, that conference is just becoming uh, amazing uh, for golf. Yeah, it was, um, and Northwestern didn't play as well, and it was actually a course that kind of set up for them. I, I thought they might play well. Um, you know, we talked about it before we went to Big Tens, guys. I mean, uh, we can literally go to the Big Ten tournament, have a decent tournament, and finish seventh or eighth, ninth. I mean, it's, it's that good right now, and, um, you know, it has a lot to do with the facilities wars that are going on, trying to get your facility up to speed. I heard you guys talking about think buying and, and what we're trying to do here, building an indoor to outdoor, and it's Board of Regents passed it finally today. We've already got, you know, over half the money raised, but, you know, it's one of those things where we have to have that because the margin of error anymore is so slim. You know, I mean, one shot per guy per round is – you know, 10 or 12 places in a tournament. So I think, you know, with us in the Big Ten, um, we're pretty proud to be one of those uh, four teams in that top ten. Actually, Michigan, funny story, they came out to watch us finish. Michigan did. I don't know if they were coming out to see if we could fall in behind them (laughs) or if we were going to make it to to the final eight. But they're sitting out there. Brad Hoppinger, our last guy, has about an eight-footer to beat Michigan. And uh, I didn't tell him, but I thought about walking out there and going, this is to beat Michigan, even though we can't make it into match play. <laughs> so he, he missed it. But, uh, you know, in, in general, uh, we support each other, just like the Big 12 schools do to each other. And it, it was a lot of fun to kind of see some familiar faces out there in, in such an elite field. Well, Mark, uh, you know, obviously this year's over. And, uh, and unfortunately, you've got to go out and figure out who you're going to get to replace Vince India. 
the Big Ten yep. Player of the Year, and then you said Brad Hoffinger, who you know played a huge role in 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 well, let's just say the the turnaround at the University of Iowa when you got there, brought him in, and and those two guys have been uh, such big parts of Iowa golf for the last few years. But I know you've got some guys waiting in the wings, and and I know you're always out on the road looking for the next guy. But the guys that are on the team right now, you got some guys that can play that nobody has really got a chance to hear about. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Doug. You know, it's one of those deals where we. This is a rare occasion. Next year, um, we had four juniors play for us this year. Those guys that were at the tournament: Jed Dirksen, um, Chris Brandt. Barrett, Kelpin, and and then Brad George obviously played a big part of our season. He was in four wins with us, so he can obviously play. And then, uh, you know, here at home we have Jared Walhowski, who is going to the U.S. Pub Links in a week. You know, he, he qualified through. He's going to go out and play Bandon Dunes. Um, he'll be our fifth senior. It's possible to play five seniors, and most of the time you don't even have five seniors on your team. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, Ryan Marks made a kind of a, an imprint last year in Iowa golf. He finished second at the match play, the Iowa match play. He finished, um, won the Kansas City Amateur, so he's a good player. Um, heck, right now, uh, Brian Bowlington, our incoming freshman, is is winning the uh, PGA Junior Series out here at Blue Top by, I don't know what it is, maybe 10 now. Shot a 67 today, and he's playing very well. So it, it's going to be a different year. You know, I mean, I didn't, uh, it's going to be a lot more on course coaching is going to be a lot more after the round how'd you shoot 78 you know what i mean it's it'll be a lot more work next year and um but that's also fun because you get some younger kids that are super excited to get in there and play for us so so it'll be a fun year mark we again congratulate you on a superb year we thank you for taking time to join us and we're going to talk to claire peterson at 705 tonight in the second hour of the show and he said you got a big university of iowa day down at the uh, john deere classic so we look forward to being down there as well yeah, we're really excited about that, guys. The uh, the John Deere is obviously uh, the one PGA Tour event we have, and um, you know, in the past we haven't had a ton of, uh, I guess, Iowa players or even Iowa State players play in this event. I mean, there's a few here and there, and um, you know, this year we decided that Illinois has a day down there. We thought that we could do an Iowa Day, um, help promote their tournament down there. They help promote the University of Iowa. Um, obviously, um, Zach Johnson's from Iowa, but he's not a—he's not necessarily a Hawkeye. He—he he, um, claims the football team, <laughs> but uh, we're excited to be a part of that brilliant. event. Yeah, and uh, Claire has uh, done a great job of, of I think his exemptions this year are going to Scott Langley from Illinois, who is uh, national champion last year, and a couple of Okie State guys that are obviously very deserving. So, um, hopefully, in the future, we can get some of our guys in there and. Uh, you know, I, I, I say the same thing about Iowa State and Drake. I mean, if we can get more Iowa kids out on tour, it's going to help out the golf in this state um, from the juniors up until the, you know, the highest ranks. All right, Mark. Well, look forward to that as well. And, again, congratulations, and thanks for the time you've given us this evening on On the Tee. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. All right. That's Mark Hankins, an incredible year. Let's take a break. We'll come back with our PGA Pick the Pro here on the Tee on the Iowa Sports Connection radio and television network. 